dear friends. Uh, my name is Stuart, I'm part of the leadership team here at King's Community Church in Norwich. We normally meet on three sites in King Street, at the Norman Centre in Mar Cross and at West Earlham Junior School, uh, but of course we're currently having to meet virtually. Uh, this is part of our King's at Home daily series and I've loved these talks, uh, even the yellow and purple logo, uh, which kind of ties them together and reminds us that we're part of a great church here together in Norwich. The colours remind us, uh, some of us anyway, of the walls in the King Centre, uh, although it looks better than, uh, than perhaps it sounds. This week our Kings at Home daily talks have been about money. We've got a couple of gift days coming up on the next two Sundays, the 12th and the 19th of July. We do this a couple of times a year, usually as an opportunity to give in to some specific needs around Kings and the wider church family of which we're a part, called Relational Mission. Now for these gift days coming up, I want to invite you to come with me and our friends at King's on an adventure. We haven't had much adventure over the last four months. Most of us have been pretty much confined to home, either working or on furlough or looking after family. And even if we've been out, everywhere's been shut. We haven't been able to travel and even going to a shop has seemed like a bit of an expedition. So I'm hoping that we might now be ready for a bit of an adventure. It's been a strange season, but right from the start of the lockdown, I've had a strong sense that God's wanted to use this time to bring about his own good purposes, and that we would need to be alert to him, ready to hear what he had in mind. We've been prevented, quite literally, from carrying on doing church in the same way that we've done it for 40 years and more, and we've had to adapt very quickly to doing it differently streaming services on Sundays, at first pre-recorded and then live on YouTube. And we've reached more people than we could accommodate at our sites on some Sundays as people have dipped in to hear worship and teaching from the Bible. We've met for prayer using Zoom and sometimes found that more people have been able to join in than would have been able to come to a physical meeting. We've done life groups and other meetings over the internet. We've reached out to one another in new ways. Oh, we've been able to continue serving those in the community who are vulnerable, reducing and taking meals to people in hostels and delivering food to folks who've been unable to get out because they've been shielding or are vulnerable. And there have been some amazing conversations with some of these people which have been able to uh, take place on doorsteps, conversations about prayer, about the gospel, about God, about doing Alpha courses. Now it's clear that we won't be able to return quickly to doing church as we've traditionally done it, although we are exploring ways to meet now that the lockdown is beginning to be eased. But new opportunities are opening up for us and it feels as though we're on the threshold of something really significant, that God wants to use this time to encourage us to explore new ways of doing and being his church. It feels like we're in a new frontier, there's a name from the past, with real possibilities of adventure and excitement waiting just around the corner. Now some of you have been this way before. Some of you, like me, will remember the beginnings of the house church movement in the 1960s and 70s. We were ready for adventure then, to do church in a different way. Then when the opportunity came to buy the King's Centre, which was the former Lads Club in King Street, some of you were here and you were ready for adventure then. You pushed boldly into what God had spoken into the church beforehand. Gough reminded us of this last week when he recalled Keith Hazel's prophetic words about the church moving to a place like a barn. When the church was called to do family life at Bible Weeks, many of you were ready for adventure then. And many of us have been on this adventure together for a while. Many others have started more recently, maybe joining Kings as their first church after leaving home to come to uni or starting a family. David Wiley and Emily Youngs are taking the first uh, step in their marriage tomorrow. It's their next step on their adventure as they get married at Helsden. Do be praying for them. Sometimes, of course, probably for most of us, the adventure becomes a bit comfortable. We start out as pioneers, but after a while we end up settling for what we have. Life gets comfy, we become less inclined to take risks, we acquire responsibilities and these can be a reason for saying, oh no, I can't do such and such for God because I'm busy doing something else for my boss or for my family or maybe just for myself. But you know what, I think God is saying to us all as a church now, 
it's adventure time again. Some extraordinary things have been happening during the lockdown. Take a look at some of the videos uh, on, on the King's website, testimonies of what people have been experiencing. People are responding on the doorstep and in other conversations about the gospel, about God, about prayer, about faith. People are being prayed for and then feeling better. We're engaging as a church with other community organisations and helping with them to serve those in need. This, I think, is just the beginning for us of doing church in a new and different and exciting way. God's going to open up new opportunities for us in the next months and we'll find ourselves doing this as a church, things as a church that we've never done before. We'll find new ways of being church. We're standing at the threshold of a new season of growth and opportunity. And God's speaking to us as we enter into this season. In Matthew 19, there's the story of the rich young man. He meets Jesus and he says, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? And Jesus replies that he should obey the commandments. And the young man says, well, I've done that. So Jesus challenges him to sell all his possessions and give to the poor so that he would find treasure in heaven. The rich young man goes away a bit sad. We don't know what happens to him after that, but he missed that opportunity to respond to Jesus and to secure more lasting riches. Earlier in Matthew, in chapter 4, Jesus calls Peter and Andrew, and then James and John, to follow him. They immediately respond. They drop everything, they follow him. He reassures them in Matthew 19 that they will receive a hundred times as much as they've left behind and they will inherit eternal life. We've got a choice, dear friends, as God speaks to us at this time. There's a broad, sunlit country ahead if we want to enter into the adventure that God's calling us to. There'll be some challenges for sure, but also the excitement of seeing what God's going to do with us as a church in these next months. So let's be alert to what God's saying and push into the new things that he has for us. At the same time, let's be ready to invest in the kingdom. We'll be doing church in new ways and that will need some money, perhaps to buy a new kit or to help those in need. We don't know yet what shape things will take, but we want to be ready to respond to what God has for us. So please, as we come to the gift days on the next two Sundays, let's be listening out to what God wants us to give. And let's be obedient, let's be responding to him as we give in to his exciting purposes. If you're up for a bit of fresh adventure, I'm looking forward to doing this together with you. In Jesus' name. Amen.